today we're going to show you how we made these microwaves. Yeah. <laughs> right, so let's get started. What we're going to do is make some white worm cultures, not white worm cultures, micro worm cultures. So I bought these off eBay, some little starter cultures under the very generic micro worm, not a specific species. So in the past, don't even think about it. In the past we've made grindle worms, white worms, various things like that. But I got these off eBay, like I said, for a couple of quid. Come with some very nice instructions slightly different than I would normally do things but we'll follow the instructions anyway. He says just to use oats so we've got some porridge oats just as a substrate in here. We need to get them wet but not soaking so kind of hence Stuart with his little squishy bottle. Wet but not swimming and um, so Go in there very carefully so you don't spray the computers or anything. Give it a good squishing. What do you think? What are you smelling it? Yeah, because it smells like oats. Of course, what is oats? Oh. Uh. So, a bit more, I think. <laughs> so, we've also got a little packet of active yeast um, because the worms don't actually eat the oats. They eat what gets produced when the oats react with the yeast. A bit more. Right. It's going to take about a year if you go at this pace. It's like really, really squishy. Squish it. Squish it, boy. Squish. But in there, not everywhere else. In here. That's it. A bit more. Wet but not wet, so give them a mix, make sure you've got them all wet, so see there, because the ones at the bottom didn't get any water, so they're still a bit dry, so a bit more in there. That's it, keep going. So, it's wet, gluey, sticky, but not sodden, that's kind of what we're going for. Supposed to stick to your hands too. Not supposed to stick to your hand. I would use an implement rather than your hand to stir it. So we're going to pour in a little bit of yeast. Oh, and you, oh, and you, oh, and you. Oh, so not tons, just a little bit. So we've got a little starter culture here. Um, you know what's good is if you open it and it smells like I don't know. What would you say this smells like? Bad. Bad. What bad though? It smells a bit like um, if you added water, loads of water and like a bit of fish vomit, fish and, vomit. and a tiny bit of whale vomit, it'd smell like that. It reminds me of when you were a baby. When I flew. This was in your nappy. <laughs> right, so. It wasn't so water. Stick that in there. Just like that. No, we'll pour it in. Not from yeah. a great height. Do it on my finger. That's it. And spread that around. No. Right, stop, not from so high up. I don't want it going everywhere. So we put that in there. And basically, that's it. You wait now. So put a few holes in here so as they can get some air exchanging. But essentially, that's it. The worms in the culture will start to feed on the oats or the the what results from the oats and the yeast reacting and after I don't know, three or four days you'll start to see the are you aiming at me? after three or four days you'll start to see the worm climbing up the side of the, the tub and that's when you can start to scrape them off and feed them to your fish or use a paintbrush if you don't want to use your fingers or whatever it is but another good idea is to have a second culture on standby because they do crash so sometimes it can be too hot or too cold uh, I'm led to believe that micro worms rather than white worms or grindle worms or any of those types are a lot more tolerant of different temperatures and conditions, so hopefully we should be okay. 
but we'll do the same in this tub as well. This tub is my old white worm culture kit. So I've done that one with a soil substrate with the oats on top, but we'll do exactly the same thing with this one. Come back in a second. So in this second one, I'm going to go with a bit of bread rather than the oats because someone accidentally mixed in the oats to the soil. But that's another fairly traditional way of culturing worms is you use a bit of bread. So we'll see how the two perform against each other, I guess. So you can see you did it on purpose. Why was there belly in that one losing this one? Only, that was half a one. Oh. Did I put it in? Mm-hmm. I missed a bit. Try and spread it around a bit. So it's not all just going on top of the seat. That's it. And that's it. Now we wait. How long? Yeah. About three days. That's a year. So we'll come back on Saturday or Sunday and check it out. See if we've got any worms. It'll probably taste like puke when I come back. Yeah, it's not the nicest smelling stuff, is it? No. Right, I'll come back in a few days. So, here we are, a few days later. Uh, it was actually about five or six days, not the three days that I thought it was going to be. But we have a successful culture in here. Um, I'll give you a, a closer look, but... It's done well. The, the two that I had going, the bread one, it did actually start to go fine, but after... I think it was day three or day four, it just crashed, went completely mouldy. There was obviously something contaminating it in the the tub that I was keeping it in there. Um, a bit of dirt or some something got in there, I'm not sure what, but it happens, they, they do crash. That's why I always prefer to have two or three different cultures going at once. And once one gets really successful, start to split it off and get another one. So rather than big boxes like this, well, this is an ideal size really, but I like to have several of this size rather than a few big ones or even smaller than this and just stack them up but let's have a look at it so you see this glistening shiny looking stuff which stinks to high heavens by the way but that that's the worms that's the culture that's doing well um when you look at it from outside the box this is what you see this pattern up the sides of any of the containers that you may be using that's the worms, that's when you know your culture's healthy because it's starting to climb the walls of the container and it's not just localised. And if you have a look under a, a microscope or something like that, you actually get to see um, what they are. They're not actually worms, they're, they're a type of nematode. Um, they feed off the bacteria that gets produced when the, the yeast reacts with whatever it is, the carbohydrates in the bread or in the oats or whatever it might be. And you see these tiny little things. And they do look like worms. I mean, this is, I think this is 20 times magnification. Um, and you saw that little needle thing that I was using earlier. Um, that's about to come into the shot. And you'll be able to see by comparison how small these things are. And they're just a really brilliant fry food. Um, or any small fish food. I'm actually going to use them on my shrimp. Um, just purely because that's what they're there for. I'm, I'm hoping to get some breeding projects going. Um and then just have a, a good culture ready to go at any time. So this is how I harvest them. Just wipe your finger across the side of the container. If you don't like doing that because it is a bit stinky, use a paintbrush or some other cotton bud or some other implement. They will just work as well. And then dip that in the tank that you want to feed and you get this kind of cloudy effect. Um, so I've got a couple of guppies in this tank. They're not all that fussed. But the shrimp, and especially the baby shrimp, they go wild for this stuff. And these these can live for a good, I don't know, six, ten hours. So you don't need to worry about um, cleaning up afterwards, because the, the fish will get to them and find them. Anyway, folks, as always, if you've enjoyed any of this or found it useful, please give me a like and comment down below and um, click on that subscription icon if you don't want to miss any videos in future and thank you for watching and we'll see you next time cheers bye bye <laughs>